Welcome back. In the last video, I introduced the concept of binary tries, how these are tries that we treat as sequences, and we look at the integer index kind of as a string, but in its binary representation. Uh, in this video, what I want to start doing is drawing some of these and show you what they look like. Uh, once again, the binary try is an immutable data structure. And so unlike a lot of our data structures where you have an outer class that has nodes inside of it, the elements of the binary try are the entire thing. And I will refer to these as vectors. Uh, and at a fundamental level, they have arrays inside of them. And there are two types of nodes in our binary try. Uh, one node is the leaf node and the other node is an internal node. And so leaf nodes store data and internal nodes store other nodes. Uh, the, um, we'll, we'll see kind of how these work for indexing and for adding, we'll start with adding. For my example, I am actually going to focus on the situation where we break things in twos. So in the last video, I showed how we could do this kind of in group our bits into fours. For this, because it's easier to draw, I am going to group things into twos. Now, in reality, every one of our integers is 32 bits, uh, which if we were grouping them into fours, means that there would be eight levels to our tree. Uh, but when your sequence is short, that's really not efficient. It's not, it's not useful to go zero, 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 zero. And most of the time you're gonna be indexing things that start with a lot of zeros. Uh, Instead, what we do is we only keep the parts of the tree that we need and we keep track kind of of what portion of the number we're looking at. In particular, the leaves are always going to look at our smallest grouping. So if we were grouping by fours, we would have what I did earlier where we pull off the lowest four bits. When we group by twos, it'll be the lowest two bits because two bits uh, can only represent zero through three, we wind up storing these things in arrays that can't be bigger than four. If we were doing four bits, they would be arrays that can't be bigger than 16. So to start off with, uh, you have kind of a nil value, an empty for your uh, vector. And that empty vector would actually have an array of size zero in it. I don't really have a good way of, of drawing that out. But if we add to that, what we get back is a new vector. Uh, I will make a vector, we'll call it V1. And it has, as I mentioned, an array. But this array only has one element in it. And I'll use letters as the contents here. And so V1 refers to our array with a single letter in it. What happens if we call add on V1? So if I said v1.add a b, uh, well, that is going to make a new leaf node that has two elements in it. And so we make a new leaf node. The first element gets copied over, the sec ele second element gets set, and v2 refers to that new uh, that new vector, okay? Fairly straightforward. Note that this was a full copy in here. Um, what happens when we call add again? Well, as I said earlier, we can go up to a size of four. We're not up to that size yet. So we wind up with three elements. Uh, when we call add on V2 to make V3, our V3, has the A and the B copied over, and then it adds the C to it. Uh, all of these elements are you know, independent. The fact that we added something to V1 doesn't change V1. Adding something to V2 doesn't change V2. These, these chunks of memory are still here. If we weren't referring to them anymore, the garbage collector would come and pick them up. If we are referring to them, they will be kept around so that we can use them, but they're not being mutated. Oh, there's one more add that's kind of, you know, another layer of, of add that's not that interesting. And that is if we add one more, we get an array with four values in it. And I'll call it 
v4. Okay. The next add is where things get interesting, though. Our uh, arrays can't get bigger than four. And so this now has to, these have all been leaf nodes at this point. The next step when we make our v5, and so we're going to declare a variable, it'll be v5. Uh, when we call add on this node, it checks itself and it says, hey, I already have four elements in me. I cannot uh, add another element in here. So what it does is it creates an internal node. And that internal node, I'm going to scooch up our v5 a little bit here. That internal node has an array with two elements in it. And those elements are not our data. Those elements are the uh, are references to other nodes. In this case, they are leaf nodes. But if we were higher up in the, in the try, they would be other internal nodes. And the first one of these actually refers to our full node here. We're going to reuse it at this point. And this is part of what makes the, the binary try uh, efficient. If we kept copying things over and over again, that would be an immutable array, uh, which winds up being not very efficient for, for adding and removing. And then we have another leaf that has our one single element in it. And it points to that new node there. And of course, v5 points to this internal node. So we have this internal node that has two. The first child has the first four elements we added. The second child has the other element we added. What happens if we call add on v5? Uh, my diagram is going to get a little bit interesting here. but So we're going to make a v6. And it's the result of adding to v5. Now, v5 is an internal node. Once again, we can't change these nodes. They're immutable. The first part is full still. So what we're going to do is we basically need to make a new final leaf. And in order to reference it, we're going to have a new internal node. So I have a new internal node. It still only needs two elements in it. The first element, though, is going to keep referencing that full node that we had. The second element is going to be an array of two with our the one value we had copied over and our one new value. Let's see. Actually, let's do that and just connect them in different order. Okay, so we get a picture that looks like that, and we need to connect up v6 here. v7 would have three elements. v8 would have two full leaves. And at v9, we're just going to assume dot, dot, dot. Uh, so by v9, we would have, for V8, we would have had another leaf that would have been E, F, G, H. We need to make a new internal node, but this time our internal node has to go up to three elements. And we need another leaf that has our one new element. The first connects to there, the second connects to there, the third connects to there. And that would be v9. Now in order to keep track of this, turns out the only data we store in our leaves is going to be an array of whatever our element type is. So if our element type is e, this is going to be an array of e's. Uh, at the internal level, we need to store two pieces of information. One piece of information is the array. And it will be an array of our vector type because it could be leaves, it could be internals, both of which are subtypes of our vector type. It also needs to store how far up it is in the tree. 
And the reason for that is that we need to know how far to downshift. So uh, however far up it is in the tree, we need to downshift by, in some ways we could call it level times the group size. So however many bits we're grouping together, uh, up here I was grouping them into four, for a drawing example, I grouped them into just twos, but whatever level we're at uh, times that group size, that way we know how far to downshift. And by the way, if I were only doing two bits, this would need to be and three, uh, not, not an F. Uh, I will note that if I write this in code, I would put zero X three, even though zero X three and just plain three are the exact same thing. By putting the zero X three, it makes it clear to anyone reading this that I care about the binary representation and I'm treating this as, as a binary. It's, it's very standard to, to write these things out in hexadecimal. If you write them out in decimal, it's potentially less clear to, uh, to your reader what you're doing. Uh, so that's it for this video. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in the next one and we'll start laying out the code a little bit to, to talk through how we would create these operations.